So whenever you're ready, could you walk through what you put together? Yeah, so we effectively simulated a classic arcade game like pinball machine. So how you start off by playing it is you use these switches here to determine the initial, initial velocity. So that's kind of like when you have the plunger and you pull it back to, for that initial launch of the ball. And so based off of that, we have like a power bar using the hex display. So as you increase the initial velocity, the power bar kind of lights up. So okay. these seven switches is what determines the initial velocity. All of it high means like super high velocity, which is why the power bar is all the way up, or lower means obviously not as much. So for example, if we don't give it a super high initial velocity and we go to play, it didn't even go up. So okay. now let's try doing increasing it a little bit. Still not quite enough because we launched it, but gravity brought it back down. So now let's increase it to one that I know will get us all the way up. So that launches it and it'll bounce around based off of the current velocity, like the X and Y components uh -huh. of it, as well as the normal vectors of whatever object it's currently bouncing off of. So whether it's the wall, like the different angles, the paddles, and things along those lines. So it'll bounce until- You go through the paddles. You go through the paddles okay. and hit the bottom of the cabinet. And so, oh, sorry, I don't know what I'm hitting. Okay. So then when you hit the ground, uh, it prompts you for a username. So this is just <clears throat> like a uh, sample from the scoreboard that we, okay. when we poured it over, we just put two examples in it just to be able to print it. But your score is determined by the number of milliseconds that you survive. Um, and when you prompt for a username, say so Hunter, then it enters you on the scoreboard and okay. prompts you to play again. Cool. And so to be able to interact with it, we have two paddles, so let's launch this again. And so there are two paddles to interact with using the two button, two of the buttons on the FPGA. So based off of what angle you have the paddles at, that'll help you keep the ball up longer. Or in my case, because I'm so bad, I tend to make it even worse and <laughs> get it to fall through faster. So when you push each of the two buttons, the paddles flick to a They're different position. position. Okay. Yeah. So you can keep trying to play. Just kind of keep going. It bounces off the top. Do the paddles add energy to the ball? If you if you kick it up, does it leave with any extra velocity that it came in, or does it just it changes the angle at which it leaves the paddle? It changes the angle at which it leaves the paddle because okay. the norm's going to be changing. It does not add any gotcha. extra oomph to it. Gotcha. So cool. To speak. And so our last kind of feature of this as well <laughs> is we have an art mode. So you can use the most significant switch and you can turn the art mode off and on, which effectively will no longer erase the trail oh, of the ball. Oh, that's a cool idea. So you can use it, as well as the paddles, to kind of make a fun image as it's bouncing around. <laughs> <laughs> so you can play around with it, especially too, if it goes along a path, it'll kind of clear it. So you can kind of play around with it. So everyone's welcome to play. You can change the velocity even more to do different paths. Might want to reset to clear the screen first, though. <laughs> So you can just cool. run and uh, play it. And can you clarify what aspects of this are running on the FPGA and what aspects are running on the HPS? So the only thing running on the HPS is the scoreboard. Okay. Okay. Everything else is run purely on the FPGA. So all the game dynamics, all the collisions, all the game physics, all of that is in Verilog on the FPGA. Yes. And driving the VGA screen. And driving yes. the VGA screen. Yes. Okay. Wow. Really nice. Sophia, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I mean, that's it. That's cool. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, just a minor point about the scoreboard. So everything on the scoreboard gets saved to a text file, uh, like, upon entry. So, like, even between, like, powering down the FPGA, like, system reboots, the, yeah. the scoreboard persists, and you still have, like, a full list of the mm -hmm. high scores of everyone who's played. Very cool. Was there a particular element of this that was the trickiest to debug or to get working? Yeah, I think just trying to figure out how to handle the collisions and how the directions were going to change. Because at first we started off with doing just a pure like velocity and a direction vector. And uh -huh. then we realized when we're introducing gravity that that only changed the Y component. And that would require way too complicated of math to actually feasibly do on the FPGA. 
And so then we had to completely swap over to doing the different components as well as making sure that it updated on the correct cycle because you had to first detect if there was a collision, then you had to update the norms, which then updated the velocities. So it's like, what of that do you make combinational in order to try and happen as fast as possible because you don't want to mess up the frame rate or like the smoothness of the animation. Yeah. And so I think that was the hardest, trying to figure out what would work best for our end goal and then having to change and like pivot when we realized our current direction wasn't going to work. And I could imagine that detecting collisions with the paddles are particularly tricky. Is that handled any differently than the walls? Originally it was. Um, originally we were reading the M10K to see if there was a black pixel there, which worked well when the ball was just a single pixel. Mm -hmm. But when we increased the radius, that kind of posed a little bit of problems. So then we did it like we did with the walls, but it still had to detect whether or not it was in the up position and down position. And in order to do that, we looked at each individual pixel of the paddle, which is, I think it's 99 pixels per paddle. And so using a generate statement in order to effectively create a barrier for each of the different pixels in the paddle to have it as the correct slope. So you're checking every pixel of the paddle, but you're doing it all, all those checks in parallel. In parallel. Yes, which is where the FPGA comes Very in clever. handy is because all of the collision detection is done completely in parallel. So the walls, all the different triangles, all the different components, all of that is completely done in parallel. Very nice. That is a lot of complexity to implement, implement fully in hardware. <laughs> it's a circuit pinball machine. Very, very cool. Thank you. Thanks.